actually just make it a bit wider as opposed to blurring it more. Something like that. And let's just read in some grain. So this is what we want. And uh, let's multiply A by B, so M. A times B, and then we'll plus that. We want to set this to multiply. So we're not really getting much, and that's because the grain is so uh, subtle. What we can do is maybe gain this, gamma it down. Let's see what we're getting. Okay, we can see a faint line. And what we might do is make it a bit wider here. Now it's too saturated, so let's come to the hue shift and 0 0.3, 0 0.4. It's a little bit bright. Let's go to the grade node. Gain that down to maybe seven, eight, maybe Q shift negative 20, maybe increase the blur, gain up this uh, green and also what we can do is move it along a bit more and then just sort of blend the two uh, so we can see it's way too bright here where they're sort of on top of each other but we'll uh, map that out shortly so this looks pretty convincing so let's uh, create a map of where it should and shouldn't be uh, to start we don't want it near the hand Okay, so I've already done this rotoscoping here. Uh, I'll include this node. And what it is, is basically just the hand based on where the laser beam is. And we can use this to sort of uh, mat out parts of the laser that we don't want. So I uh, rotoed this as the alpha channel. So if we view the roto node and just take the background out, we'll see that that's where the hand is and it's in the alpha channel. It doesn't have anything in the RGB. So I'll just uh, shuffle the alpha channel into the RGB. And now the RGB is the same as the alpha. You can see here we swap between alpha and RGB by hitting A. They are both the same. So now we can multiply the beam which also doesn't have an alpha channel. That's why I shuffled the, um, the roto uh, alpha into the RGB. And we can just do a multiply merges A times B. And uh, we just need to invert this here because um, if we view this alpha or the RGB rather, we see that it is the wrong way around. So let's invert that and then we multiply and it's correct. And then we can see here that if we hook A up to this multiply that uh, we don't have the extended laser beam over our hand. Now what we also need to do is multiply this by another mat uh, which we will create ourselves just to where these two are sort of meet. So let's add P for a roto paint node and then let's sort of draw in a shape. So let's go Bezier, turn our overlays on. I'm just gonna draw right through the middle. Okay, so if we have a look at this, look it up, that's what we get. So we want to multiply A times B. So this is currently outputting RGBA. So we can just do multiply merges again. And then, whoops, A times B. And then that gets hooked into the tree. So now we can see it's getting cut off here. 
and the shape we want to feather this so let's go feather maybe 20 and just sort of link these up and what we can do is grab the card and move it slightly back in Z so minus 2 well let's go minus 2.5 whoops move it back X so Let's just nudge this back. About there, that looks good. So again, with this, just want them to meet up so that you can't really tell that um, they're joined. So that looks pretty good. All right, so we'll have to animate or move uh, this Rotopaint node just based on where the hand sorry, where the two join, uh, I'll just organize the tree a bit. So if we grab this node here, the rotor paint node, we can animate that. So come back to the rotor paint, we'll see that there's a key that has been set there. Let's go to frame 198 and we'll meet these two up. And to the end, you can see that we don't need this at all. And I'll just go through and animate this and fast forward. And let's select all these nodes here and just add in a backdrop. And then double click. And I'll call this footage repair just because this is where we uh, repaired our raw footage so that we would have the line. And let's just view this here. There we go. Okay, so next step is to create a mat for uh, where the laser should and shouldn't be. So we can use a combination of uh, the hand roto that we have. So copy that, paste it over here, and also the, uh, the camera data that we have. So let's copy all this camera data and paste it here. And uh, what we want is a constant and I'll just make it black for now. And uh, we wanna plug this into a card. We wanna plug the card into the scene and uh, let's see where this is. So let's view this here. And let's just temporarily hook this up to the background. Okay, that's where our card is. Let's go into 3D space and enable these points. And here's our card. Now we can't see anything on the card. So let's add in some color. And let's double click on the features here. Give them some size. And uh, what I want to do is just move this to where I think it should be. So it needs to line up essentially where this wall is. So let's uh, grab the card, maybe increase the scale to three and rotate it minus 91 like we did before and move it up so it's sort of sitting on the ground plane. And then move it over. And then I'm going to just scale uh, X a little bit. And then maybe just a bit extra, whoops, 1.5. Then move that over. So there it's touching the very edge. So if we go back into the view, we should see that uh, it's sort of in the right spot X wise. Uh, we can move it forward in Z until we reach where we want to be. I've actually gone a little bit further than I need to. And that's because what we want to do is add in a roto paint. So P is a shortcut for that. And uh, what we'll do is uh, merge A over B so that we can give transparency to this. So a over B and then just connect this here. So let's view this. 
And then uh, with this, we can mix it. So let's go 0 0.5, actually 0 0.1. And uh, what we want to do is draw in uh, a roto paint or our, our bezier. And what this will allow us to do is because this is match moved in, uh, we'll only have to draw it once and it's going to stick. So let's come in here and get drawing. So it's a little bit hard to draw uh, because we have the drawing projected. But I can slide this over. And we want to draw it a bit further than we need to just because the camera moves. Okay, there we have it. Now let's uh, hit Q to go to select all and let's move these to where they ought to be. Now I can't really see where this point ought to be. So if we move forward, uh, we'll be able to see where it should be. And uh, what we'll do is just go to the previous key. And the hotkey for that is Alt uh, arrow key. And then we can remove that key so there's no longer any keys and then just sort of fix this up here. And you'll notice that it sticks because uh, we have match moved this and it is extremely accurate. Just move this over a little bit. And what we want to also do is capture the rest of this up here. Okay, Beziers are a little bit weird, but we can smooth them out. And we can see that we, this uh, whole thing needs to go further out because uh, there's not enough space here. So with the card, we can move it slightly along. Uh, let's just go tab and then move it over slightly. A bit more. Okay, now that it covers all of it, we can fix up our masks. And I'll just remove this key here. And then let's drag these points over so that they fit. We can disable auto key so that these stop uh, moving wherever they go because we need to look at different points in time to match uh, these up and we can't really do that properly uh, when we have auto key enabled. So move those so those are in the correct spot. Okay, now that they match up, what we can do is just set this to output to the alpha and then pre melt the RGB by the alpha. So now we actually have a mask here, uh, and what we can do is combine it with the uh, hand roto that we have to create a map for exactly where uh, the laser should be. So. Let's uh, just view this render here. This is what we're getting. So white is where the laser ought to be. And if we have a look at this uh, hand roto here, this contains white, 
but this is um, sort of where we don't want it to be. So, so what we'll do is minus a 